Hey everyone, and welcome back to the second installment of me talking about this monstrosity right here. In the previous episode, we were talking about how we were able to encode over 160,000 blocks worth of flight distance, or more, into this front section of the flying machine. This gives us the semi-useful ability to essentially program a destination, sit in the flying machine for a couple hours, and stop right on point. Now, of course, I highly recommend go checking out the original video because it'll definitely contextualize everything we'll be discussing in this one. But if you've already gone ahead and seen it, today's video, we're going to be talking about this entire back section of the flying machine, the engine that powers it into the beyond, as well as the braking mechanism. So let's get right into it. Now, let's kind of contextualize the problem that we're trying to immediately solve here. See, last episode, we kind of designed this entire thing to fly pretty fast, and we did a good job. See, if I give two pretty quick, short pulses, it flies perfectly well. But the thing is, is that since we're inevitably counting towards some final distance, we're going to need to carry some numbers over into the next digits, and when we're doing that, that actually takes a long time. As you can see, take some time to carry over all these numbers. So, we need to account for that. What this essentially means is that, if we pretend our machine counts like this pattern, we're actually smooth sailing from 12 to 19, but the moment that we have to carry over the 1's place to the 10's place, this actually takes a little bit more time, and we have to accommodate for multiple carryovers because in this section, when we need to carry the digit from the 1's place all the way to the 10,000's place, this involves 4 different carryovers, which takes 4 times as long. Now, this isn't actually the first time I've had a problem like this. In the previous design, we had a similar dilemma. See, the machine can go pretty fast just traveling normally, but the moment that we actually have to perform the operation that is checking to see if the player is hoeing this dirt in order to start counting distance, it actually takes a long time for just that operation, and then it's smooth sailing again. However, we used the quick and dirty solution. We just allotted as much time as it took to perform the super long operation to every single move. This is a stupid solution, and it sucks, but it's simple. Because it means that we can just have one engine, instead of specifically allotting ourselves more time when we need it. Now, the reason why I, uh, I guess gave in to using this really rudimentary solution was because this thing was more of a proof of concept. And it's okay that it was quite slow, because the operation of checking for dirt was actually pretty fast, all things considered. Now, unfortunately, this kind of time skimping is not going to fly on this new design, because since it has multiple counters, there is a guaranteed chance that it's going to eventually have to perform a carryover where it has to carry over multiple numbers. And this takes even more time, and alloting that to every single move when that kind of rare carryover only happens once every 8,000 times is kind of a waste of a lot of our precious time. So, in order to figure out how we optimally solve this issue, I've set up a little bit of an analogy. If we go ahead and pretend that we're counting towards 8,000, as well as the fact that our machine happens to take some very specific times, as well as count in base 10, we can outline our problem like so. It takes one second for zero carries, so just one to two, that's no carrying, it takes one second. Two seconds for one carry, three for two, four for three. That means that, for example, 999 to 1000, we carry three times, that's four seconds. Whereas 999, eight to 999 takes one second, we're only changing one number. So to start off in a perfect world, we give the machine only exactly as much time as it needs. And what that essentially says is, it's gonna take 8,888 seconds, because it takes 800 seconds to do the extra time for single carries, 80 to do the doubles, and 8 to do the triples. This is highly unrealistic though, because this basically expects the machine to know exactly how long it's going to take for every operation it performs, and accordingly give itself that time. That takes a highly complex engine and is totally not worth it. Now, let's assume we're in a garbage world. Here, we're using the strategy we used in the hoe base flying machine, where we're giving as much time as it could possibly need at every single movement. This basically just means we're going to give 4 seconds to every operation. Every op There's 8,000 operations. 4 times 8,000 is 32,000. This totally sucks. This is almost quadruple the amount we got before. So I think it's pretty clear we don't want to go with the garbage solution because practically three quarters of it is wasted time, but the perfect world solution requires an incredibly complex engine that we just simply can't make within our technical limitations. 
So the compromise we're going to go for instead is give essentially a maximum amount of time to any carryover, regardless of how much time it takes. To make it more understandable, it's kind of a mash between the perfect and the garbage, because we're actually giving a garbage amount of time as maximum amount of time as possible, but instead of giving it to every operation, we're giving it to only 1 in 20 operations when there will be any carry happening at all. Because 19 out of 20 times, nothing's going to be happening for the machine. It's just going to be going on its merry way, swiping around this first initial counter. But when this counter is finally complete, it's going to carry up to the this one, maybe to this one, maybe to this one. We don't care. We'll give it all the time in the world. And this allows us to save 19 out of 20 operations that we would have initially had to compute in the garbage version. In terms of our little mathematical analog here, we're actually only consuming 10,400 seconds. This is nearly 2,000 seconds slower than the perfect world, which is really great considering that we only need to have one counter to determine when we're performing any carryover. Now, to put this into practice, we essentially need an engine that's capable of traveling very quickly for 19 blocks, but then on the 20th block, essentially grind to a halt, give the machine time to compute, and then continue on its merry way. When I initially started designing this thing, I need to break it down into steps, so let's start with the very first thing we need to do, which is stop it once every 20 blocks. We don't care about starting it, that'll come later. So, we use this machine. See, it's going to fly forward at an adequate speed, but it's also going to have its own separate counter for the engine specifically. And what this is going to do is when I update this block, it's going to start flying forward at the speed we want it to. And it's going to keep looping this counter until the moment, give me a second to speed up time, until the moment the observer reaches this position. And that's going to cause this front observer to power an extra time, canceling out this piston movement and stopping the engine. The way I actually had the idea for the stopping mechanism was completely derived from the original problem. You see, we know that this machine, when it's carrying over too many things, when it's doing too many things, it'll stop because the pistons will jam up. So what I'm essentially doing is using this spamming observer line to intentionally induce that exact problem, jam this front piston, and then cause the entire mechanism to grind to a halt. Time for problem two. How do we start it again? And initially, I was trying to come up with a timing system on board the engine, but that proved to be incredibly difficult. The thing is, you don't have access to a lot of components. See, a hopper timer would be incredible, but literally every machine involved is completely unusable on flying machines. So I had to get a bit more creative. And that is where this section comes in. This is a flying machine that has one more step than the one below it, meaning it's slightly slower, and it's going to lag behind. And if we actually look at how that looks like, I'm going to power it, and both are going to start moving at the same time. If we actually go forward in time, a little bit more, this machine is going to stop. And then this one is going to catch up the lost time, start it again, and we'll continue going. By effectively utilizing a machine that intentionally lags behind, we can use the difference in speed of these two to essentially create a sort of break for the flying machine. And this will give it all the time in the world it needs to calculate any amount of carryovers. All right, okay. So we've done the engine, it can move now. We've done the information management and carrying over. It can count to a number as high as we please. But the thing is, is that the moment that it reaches that specific, specific number, it's just going to keep going. It's not going to stop because we never told it to. And that means that we need a braking mechanism. Luckily for us, this is the simplest part of the entire machine, and it's just this tiny little dongle I tacked onto the end. I've moved it over to this single slice so I can show you how better how it works. Under normal circumstances, it's just going to move with the rest of the machine. It tags along at this section and just keeps getting pushed forward. However, if the observer happens to be in the exact right position, powering this piston, that means that this entire counter has fully completed. It's going to power this piston and move these two gloss blocks back. What that has essentially done is now the next time this is going to move, this piston is going to try and push this cluster and it's going to get blocked. These two extra blocks kicks over the push limit into 13, and now when this moves forward, it can't push it. And what that's going to do is it's going to back up to this section, which can't push that, which can't push that, which can't push that, and then the entire system is going to completely fail. 
What's also really funny is that when this thing does inevitably actually crash, it I've said it right here to travel about like two blocks, this entire front half of the machine is going to stop first, and then this second flying machine is actually going to align with this observer, causing this incredibly annoying alarm bell noise, I guess to wake you up from whatever you were doing, and remind you that you've arrived at your destination. And that's just about it to the machine. So for actually writing it and programming it, let's talk about it. So you just have to do some simple math. I've taken us out here to the end because we're going to be flying 1340 blocks in that direction. Just a random arbitrary number I picked for this demonstration. And this is just about the math. The only thing I'll actually consider is this three right here accounts for the amount of slices there are, not including this first one. The actual mechanics and why this works, I'll write that in the description, but basically the numbers that get spit out is 0, 3, and 7. So, 0, we don't change this top slice. 3, we can move it 3 blocks backwards, so that's 1, 2, 3. That'll go right here. And then 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, if we display the machine, it's just gonna go. Now something I want to note is we never actually adjust this bottom slice because it's the dependent on the position of this slice as well and just overcomplicates things. And we can sacrifice the 20 block precision that we would have gained with this bottom slice. And we have arrived. So over there is a kind of little test flight I did to make sure my math added up. And we're going to check our work right here. So as you can see, we've arrived at the coordinates 1424. And if we go ahead and fly all the way back to the very beginning, we'll find that I'd say we started our thing just about here. This is 71. If we do the math, 1424 minus 71, that's about 13 and 53, I think. 1353, that's just 13 blocks above our inputted distance. Ultimately, being off by 20 blocks is not really a huge concern, because all that matters is that it doesn't scale with distance, which means that even if you travel 16 million blocks, you're still only going to be off by 20. Anyways, that'll be it for today's video. In the background, I'll play some clips I captured of the thing flying as well as the crashing. If you liked today's video, make sure to like and subscribe, check out my other content, and I'll see you next time.